we've been following the story for a while now. He has insisted on representing himself since entering the league in 2018, still has no agent. It's become a point of pride. It's become an issue of stubbornness. He doesn't want to acknowledge that he should have had an agent in the past. So if you hire one now, you implicitly acknowledge that maybe you should have had one. And as it turns out, and this is something that we reported at PFT on Wednesday, there was somebody who's been calling the teams to try to basically beat the bushes, to get teams to come to the table, to get teams to negotiate with Lamar Jackson, potentially signing him to an offer sheet. It was funny, Peter, when I reported that the other day, and I added that this individual is telling teams, one, Lamar doesn't want a fully guaranteed contract, even though he has wanted one throughout his negotiations with the Ravens. And two, this person is telling teams that Lamar Jackson's ready to move on from the Ravens. Ravens fans lost their minds at that suggestion. Well, what do you think the guy's saying? What do you think the guy's saying? He wants to stay in Baltimore. I'm just calling to check in. You don't know me. I don't know you. Hello. Hey, would you sign Lamar to a, an offer sheet that the Ravens can match so he can stay with the Ravens? He wants to stay with the Ravens. I mean, this is a tangible right. sign that he's exploring his options. So yesterday comes the news that the league, as they did with Roquan Smith, when St. Omni, the notorious St. Omni, was calling teams to try to arrange a trade out of Chicago for Roquan Smith, the NFL sent a memo then saying you can't talk to somebody who isn't certified by the NFLPA. You can only talk to the player if he doesn't have an NFLPA certified agent. Same thing happened yesterday with a gentleman named Ken Francis, a business partner of Lamar Jackson's, who, as the memo said, may be, I think the truth is, is, I know the truth is, is. I don't know why they opted for a softer formulation, but the NFLPA has informed us a person by the name of Ken Francis not an NFLPA certified agent, may be contacting clubs and attempting to persuade personnel to enter into negotiations with or concerning Lamar Jackson. Bottom line is, thou shalt not talk to anyone who isn't certified by the NFLPA. You can only talk to the player. So, Peter, look, I still don't know why I just won't go hire an agent. Again, at this point, I believe it's stubbornness. And it just further complicates... A strange and bizarre story for a guy who should have his long-term contract by now, and I think would if he just would have hired an agent at some point in the past couple of years. You know, Mike, there's a couple of things that this tells me. Number one, uh, if indeed Ken Francis is contacting teams on behalf of Lamar Jackson, which is alleged in this uh uh, document and in this press release it basically confirms everything that you and about 9,000 other people have been saying in the media in the league everywhere that it's totally penny wise and pound foolish to not have an agent but we know that everybody knows that that's very old news the fact is that Lamar Jackson when I first saw this Mike and when I first heard about it on Wednesday when I first heard about this, I said, okay, it has now been one week, and now actually it's been nine days that Lamar Jackson does not have an offer, nor apparently is he deep in conversation with any team about giving him an offer. And, you know, you can round up the usual suspects, and you can say, okay, will Team X, will the whatever, Tennessee Titans, Washington Commanders, what, whoever, whoever it is, will they make an offer? And it's clear to me that there are no offers, at least as of now. We are nine days into the process, and you would think that if there was a crowd of teams or even one team, because that's the famous saying around the NFL. It only takes one team to sign a guy to a free agent contract. It only takes one team to blow up the market. The Cleveland Browns, they blew up the market. Would any of the other suitors for Deshaun Watson have offered Watson a fully guaranteed contract that the Cleveland Browns did? No. They would have offered him a generous contract, but fully guaranteed? Absolutely not. But it only takes one. 
And now here we are nine days into the process and it is clear that it must be a little bit of a slap in the face to Lamar Jackson that no team is coming after him aggressively. Thus, whatever happened with Ken Francis, and we don't know exactly what happened with Ken Francis, but whatever happened with him in sort of urging teams, if indeed that's what he did, which obviously has been alleged now. And Mike, the one other thing I thought of, and I think this is pretty interesting, that if the NFLPA has very quietly been helping Lamar Jackson over the last couple of years, very quietly, which we've all heard, obviously, been giving him advice and uh, allowing him to talk to people in the NFLPA organization about whatever negotiating strategies, whatever it would be. How do you think the NFLPA feels right now that they have had to basically pursue uh, a, I guess you'd call it a little slap on the wrist to Lamar Jackson for whatever Ken Francis has been doing? So I think what I am thinking now, nine days into this process, no offer sheet, I'm thinking that there has to be desperation uh, beginning to creep into Lamar Jackson. He denied aggressively, as he usually does. There have been various things reported about Lamar Jackson and his pursuit of a new contract, his refusal to have an agent. It's been reported, and he takes to Twitter, and he denies it, and everybody just believes his denial without scrutiny, without disagreement. The fans run with it. If Lamar says it didn't happen, it didn't happen. Well, Peter, you've been charitable in using the term alleged. I'm willing to trust my multiple sources on this. It's not alleged. It's happening. It happened. It may not be happening now, but it definitely happened. And I think that I don't know this, but I would guess that maybe the maybe in the memo to the teams was an effort to tiptoe around the NFLPA a little bit to try to soften whatever blow there is to Lamar Jackson's overall image from this. And I really believe that the denial comes from because like why would you deny it why who cares it's you did it oh I didn't know I didn't know he couldn't do it okay fine we move forward number one he's so committed to doing this by himself he doesn't want to ever have it look like anyone is helping him other than maybe his mother which has been documented and I don't think anybody has issued a strong denial of that over the years but that may be one reason to deny it number two the NFLPA point that you made the NFLPA is helping him And he's trying to do some sort of end run or circumvent whatever the union is doing. And he doesn't want to make the union mad at him. So that's a reason to deny it. And the other one that just dawned on me as you were speaking, it's embarrassing. Flat out. Embarrassing to him that even with someone out there actively trying, it's one thing if he's just sitting back and nobody calls. There's no conduit for communication. Someone is actively trying to get teams to talk, and they refuse to talk. That's an embarrassment to Lamar Jackson. Now, it's more complicated than just, oh, we don't want this guy. I think there are teams that would want the guy. But there are a stew, and Sims and I were talking about this the other day, a stew of factors causing teams to stay away from Lamar Jackson at this point. Maybe they will make a run after the draft. Maybe when it's 2024 and 2025, First round picks, it would be in play if you sign him to an offer sheet the Ravens don't match. But, Peter, I continue to believe the biggest issue here is teams wonder, if not believe, if not are convinced that if you sign Lamar Jackson to an offer sheet, the Ravens are probably going to match it. I think so too. But, but it won't be matched if it's. Five years, two hundred and fifty million guaranteed, fully. So you know, going into it, right? So that's one of the reasons. That really is one of the reasons why um, I think most people who try to analyze this thing, seeing both sides, Mike, I don't get how anybody could say that. It's bizarre or strange or it's some muscle flexing by NFL owners to keep players down. What's so 
incredulous to anybody that a guy who has started and finished one game in December and January of the last two seasons combined that you wouldn't want to fully guarantee his contract. I, I, I don't understand what, what is not understood about that because it's clear that the reason that if Lamar Jackson were as healthy as a as let's say Patrick Mahomes or Justin Herbert or 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 whoever or many quarterbacks who you know have had very limited uh, injury histories I believe somebody would give him a fully guaranteed contract and it might be Baltimore I mean I kind of doubt it would be Baltimore but I do believe that He'd be getting what he wanted if he didn't have the injury history. And that's just the way it is. And I just don't think that's going to change. Well, I do believe that one of the factors, and again, I'm convinced there's now a stew of different reasons why teams aren't pursuing him. One of the factors is the blowback last year to the Deshaun Watson deal and this vague sense that owners just don't want to go down that path we saw and Peter I don't know if you read this it was the item posted last week by Demore Smith the NFLPA executive director in which he tried to link this moment in time to what happened in basketball back in the early 80s Larry Bird gets a fully guaranteed contract that opens the floodgates they're trying to open the floodgates and frankly that's where the NFLPA and Lamar Jackson's interests may not be completely aligned If the NFLPA is trying to use Lamar Jackson as the device for getting fully guaranteed contracts for all franchise quarterbacks and presumably eventually for all players, and Lamar Jackson is missing out on an opportunity to get a damn good contract that isn't fully guaranteed, that is a conflict of interest. That is an area where the agendas and objectives diverge between Lamar Jackson and and the NFLPA, and maybe that's why he had Ken Francis making these calls, because, Peter, it was the one lone random voice that popped up three or four weeks ago when Stephen A. Smith said he spoke to someone from Lamar's camp who said he's never asked for a fully guaranteed contract. Now, that's just false. That's just false, and I'll call it false when I believe it's false, and it's false, but but I believe Ken Francis has been telling people including Stephen A. Smith, if I had to guess, he'd be the one who told him that. Ken Francis has been saying he doesn't want a fully guaranteed contract. Now, it's a matter of semantics, because if I had to guess, I'd say what Ken Francis is saying is he only wants $200 million fully guaranteed, and everything above that can be non-guaranteed. It's still a significant and major amount requiring escrow payments, et cetera, for a team that would actually sign him. But again, that resistance we saw last year, that cold shoulder that the Browns claimed they didn't get, but we all kind of believe they got at the league meetings after they did the five-year 200. Oh, they got years. it. All right. That's just one of the factors. <laughs> so that, so, so again, but I don't think that that's, I don't think that is the primary or sole reason. I think it's just one of the various factors. We, you know, we don't want to start down this path if it's going to be a gigantic guarantee that's going to require this escrow payment because of an outdated funding rule aimed at protecting players against insolvent teams years ago. It's now being used as a weapon against players who want fully guaranteed contracts because, oh, we don't want to put $170 million into escrow in order to comply with this outdated rule. It's the Ravens may match. It's we're just having a hard time negotiating with them. It's we don't want to be in the Ravens' shoes in the future where we see the issues they've had negotiating with this guy without an agent. We don't want to be in that situation. If we want to extend his contract, revise his contract, if we want to do any business with with this guy, we can't do it because we've witnessed the Ravens' inability to do it. So I think it's a lot of factors. The injuries, there's a lot of things that go into this. And even though Ken Francis has and, tried, and Mike, and Mike, he hasn't been able to get anyone's attention. Mike, I, I also want to add this. So who really in, in all of football have been um, Joe Douglas's mentors? Okay, Ozzie Newsome, Eric DaCosta certainly have been two very prominent ones. Joe Douglas, GM of the Jets, used to be uh, one of the lead scouts for the Ravens. In fact... He was one of two guys who basically led the Ravens 
in 2008 to Joe Flacco. And, you know, obviously that paid off handsomely for the Ravens a few years later with a Super Bowl. So Joe Douglas is highly regarded inside the Ravens building. And Joe Douglas has an excellent relationship with both Ozzie Newsome and probably particularly Eric DaCosta, the GM. And so I, 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 as soon as everybody started saying, me also, that, you know, hey, the Jets should be going after Lamar. And, you know, it might be that they should be going after Lamar because that might not be a one-year Band-Aid on their quarterback problem as we don't have any idea right now, today, this moment, if Aaron Rodgers will play in 2024. But that is part of the problem. Joe Douglas is has to be thinking to himself, if they can't get a deal done, how could we? You know, I, I agree completely. And look, there are factors and complications in trying to do an offer sheet with Lamar Jackson. You need a certain amount of cap space in order to do something with significant guarantees. You have to get that together. It has to be in place for the entire time that the Ravens have to match five business days. The Ravens already have $32.4 million sitting aside for Lamar Jackson anyway under the non-exclusive franchise tag. So they're in a position. There have been occasions in the past where a team hasn't been in a great position to match if someone would swoop in with an offer sheet specifically calculated to get the team to not match or to not be able to match. The Ravens, for the most part, are able to match. And most teams out there don't currently have the cap space. They'd have to go out and create it, and then they'd have to make their move. And, Peter, a point I made this week, too, for some of the teams out there that, in theory, you would say, well, Lamar Jackson is better than the guy we have, the pursuit via an offer sheet would be so open and obvious that it potentially creates problems for you going forward. If the Lions would put together an offer sheet for Lamar Jackson and not get him, then they have a problem with Jared Goff. The Vikings have been one of the teams mentioned in this conversation. Well, the only way you even get to the point where you can make the offer sheet to Lamar Jackson is you got to get rid of Kirk Cousins. So you get rid of Kirk Cousins, you make a, a Lamar Jackson offer sheet, the Ravens match it, and then Nick Mullins is your starting quarterback. I, it's I, So... There are just many reasons why teams are shying away. I think there's a chance after the draft, depending upon who addresses their quarterback position and who doesn't, for someone to maybe think about it. But even then, you got to worry about the Ravens matching the offer. And through it all, Lamar will wait. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.